If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Yeah, you. Yeah. For the first 38 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. Find uh, out if you would be broke if you live in the Bay Area. We talk about what is 100%. considered low income for a family of four in the Bay Area. Here's a little hint. It's more. It's almost triple what's considered low income. The national norm. Everywhere else yeah. uh, in America. I talk about combining cordyceps and caffeine for pre-workouts. Sal's still trying to push it on me. Now, that is with Four Sigmatic. We are sponsored by Four Dude, Sigmatic. They have chocolate, uh, you know, now with mushrooms. You That's right. Try that. That was bomb. It if was you good. go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump, and the code is mind pump for a discount. We also talk about Adam's BPC-157 update. This is a research chemical he's messing with. BPC. Uh, and we'll see if it's working. He I thought this was my adult, my adult toy. No, not that. Uh, <laughs> that's the other. That's why what, would I have that kind of a name? That's why I'm going to name her. Closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, uh, and we also give you a little workout, a little bit of a workout update. Um, then we get into the questions. The first question was: This individual is pregnant. They want to know how they should train pre, during, and post pregnancy. So we go into that. In this find part. out what Justin did, huh? In this part <laughs> yeah, of the man. episode, it was a process. He's got twins yeah. in his glutes. <laughs> The next individual asked us about muscle versus fat. They know that muscle takes up less space than fat, but you know they've lost 20 pounds of fat, gained 8 pounds of muscle, but they find it hard to be happy about the muscle because they feel bigger. What advice do we have? The next question was about HIIT training. We talk about how HIIT training should be uh, not super, super focused on just going to fatigue, how that uh, applies to exercise, how the, excuse me, to athletics. Does it improve athletic performance? This individual sounds like they may be competing in Spartan events. What should they do? Uh, And the final question, what are our thoughts on post-activation potentiation? This is an advanced technique with resistance training and explosive movements that stimulates more muscle cells, more muscle fibers, uh, and improves performance. We talk a little bit about that. There's a little bit of a debate as to whether or not the explosive movements should be done pre or post mm. the tension movement. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, yeah. listen it's, to the episode. This is nerd, we you know, trainer stuff. Explain it to you. Also, there's only 48 hours left. Ooh. Two days. One, two. Two days left for half off maps anywhere. It's on sale all month long, 50% off. Biggest promotion of the year. You can find that at mindpumpmedia.com. Remember, Maps Anywhere is our program that utilizes almost no equipment. All you need are bands. And a stick, you can do the workouts almost anywhere. It's great for people who travel, great for people who want to work out at home. Uh, well-programmed, uh, no equipment needed workout. We also have MAPS bundles. That's where we take multiple MAPS programs and put them together for specific goals. For example, our super bundle is a year of exercise programming. You can find that bundle and all the other ones and the 50% off MAPS anywhere, all at mindpumpmedia.com. God, why are you always last? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, you sit directly across from me, and the signal should be when you see my, put my headphones on, you should just know that, that means put your... I don't look at you all the yeah, time. Obviously not. No. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. I'm not the one walking around with fucking holes in my crotch. <laughs> yeah. This you, guy, yesterday you, was, I was so blessing you, bro. He turned, he turned beat red when did I they, when they, I called him out on that. I got Jackie sitting right next to me. I didn't at all, man. Yeah. I own that one hundred percent. Hold on a second. Did He's you, like, she is did staring you, like, at my yeah. dick right now. Were those yeah, shorts like a big red target? Were those shorts torn? Like you didn't know, or did you put them on and tear them? I put them on and, t- and tore them. How did you tear them here? That's not that's not the same one. As no, you tore I did them. it. No, I did it in the morning, like before I got here. What did you, how? <laughs> I was stepping out. And it's it got a fat <laughs> ass, bro. That's why. <laughs> I went to step and grab something, and I fucking dude. Why don't you uh, move your way out of mediums, dude? <laughs> you think maybe it's time I for wasn't a... mediums, dude. They're <laughs> like XLs, bro. Like, got, I got them cakes. He's got them pound cakes. I dude. think for Viore, you gotta have to do the double XL. Well, dude. You no, know, Viore's good because it gives me some room to flex. You oh know? yeah, like these ones, they were like real rigid, like kind of cottony, polyestery. So mm-hmm. it just like polyester. No joke, no yeah. joke. Split. I, I want to pay you money to see you twerk. I, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like you'd get the clap. What do they call it? When they booty, get the clap. booty clap. Yeah, yeah the yeah. booty clap. Can you booty clap? Listen, I feel of course like you he can. can. That would take a can lot you, of money. Be honest. Can you booty clap? 
Uh, I'm sure I could learn it. Don't act like you haven't tried. <laughs> yeah. Don't act. I know you, bro. It sounds like this. You've tried at least <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hear it's really hard to do. Listen. A booty clap? Yeah. You have to have big cake. You got to have some ass. You have to have some heavy. Yeah, you can't. Stuff. You can't just have like a big. Sh- sh- show me the money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's got to be a lot of money. I'll buy you a coffee. All right. Here we go. Really, a lot Fair of money. Enough. A lot of yeah. Was I'm not gonna money. put that out there. Why would I do that? Yeah, he's right. He's got kids, it's bro. Fucking weird. You don't want your kids. <laughs> you don't want. You don't want your kids going. Hey, look at me. <laughs> My dad booty claps. Yeah. I'm, look, like, you don't have like, I'm kids. I'm cool yet. with a lot of things. Justin but. and I already have to contend with the fact that at some point, at some point, it's 100 percent guaranteed. Our kids are gonna listen to yeah. our episodes. I just learned I'm gonna floss. Have, I'm gonna have to explain some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some explanations. Have yeah. you thought of that, Justin? We've yeah. talked about this. Yeah. I have, especially once they start listening. What, to you know episodes. what's funny? I don't think you, when when they do, I think you, you guys won't care. Because you know why? When they finally do, when they give a shit and they want to listen to their dad's job for fucking 800 hours, that's going to be when they're 30, bro. <laughs> I love it. So? It's too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, it's like- yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now, they're too cool, bro. By like, by oh, time, man, that'll take forever. They are not interested in what the fuck you guys are doing. Here's about. what I think will happen. Yeah, what I right. think is going to happen is one of their friends is going to get into working out when they're like oh my God. 16. Yeah. And they're going to be like, dude. Your dad, did you know your dad fucking blah, does yeah. this and said that? And, you know, my kid's going to be like, what? My dad yeah. did what? Or their so? friend's mom. Yeah, you know, or the friend's mom yeah, or dad. Kind of like Come on, dude. There, there, teacher there conference. Is, Someone's going to know. There, there, That's what I'm worried about. Yep. Oh, I, the parent, I avoid those. The parent-teacher conference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you? are there any parents at your kid's school that listen to the show? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, you don't, I'm, I'm sure. I don't know. Like, I mean, I know some from high school that I was like friends with that listen. Oh, so, okay. but yeah, but those are the only people I know. Oh of. no, like, I've already got parents, dude. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh wow. Yes. Oh, so, wow. so one dad comes up to me and he looks at me, and he gives me this look like, you know, when you like find he's disappointed. No. <laughs> so you ever meet somebody and you don't know them yet, right? But, but then you, you, but then you find out something about them. Like, let's say you meet people. And dude, you're, I already know what you're. There was a, this, you know who was like this for us. I know we all will agree. It was like this, is like Russo. Uh, like the uh, first time Russo was in the same room as us, yeah. we just yeah. kind of look at him, just like grinning at each other. Like we haven't even really talked very much, but I can tell we're the same people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I can tell you're my people. I know, exactly. I know, I know you, bro. Yeah. Exactly, because because yeah. there was these, you know, there's this one guy. He's, he's an ex MMA fighter, big dude, cool guys. If he's listening, great dude, right? And he comes up to him. He's got this look on his face, and he's like. I like your show, man. <laughs> and I'm like, and I can tell he's like, we're friends now because yeah. I heard you on the show. You know what That's saying? fine. A lot of jujitsu guys listen to us. Apparently, like I, I've met so many jujitsu guys. Yeah, like, well, oh, our whole school listens to you guys. Like, yeah, awesome. That's because you have to be cool. Yeah, I guess to so. Do jujitsu. Yeah. yeah, we got. I think we shout out to some of the, our firefighters and police police guys yeah. too. We have, yeah, yeah, I know we have. Uh, we've been meaning to do some too. shit with them. I know. I know Casey's working on something for them. Really? For yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's we get some. We have something in store. You for know, them. my sister's mm. boyfriend friend who i'm sure they'll get married at some point is uh just became a cop san jose police uh officer yeah so uh, so yeah did you hear one in the family now did you hear that stat they were rattling off in the book that we were just listening to this morning yeah they're talking about how that's uh one of the sought after jobs for i jenners that they think oh yeah firefighters police officers Mm -hmm. because of the perceived guarantee security yeah security yeah i don't i wouldn't want to be a cop dude no yeah, way. That's not right now. It's an impossible job. Not it's right now. Right now, it's people. like, man, it's tough. I, I I got a lot. Like I got a lot of compassion for them, dude. I Me feel, too. Like, Huge respect. Yeah, yeah. You know why I wouldn't want to be one? A hundred percent would not want to roll up on some crazy scene of some kid getting, you know, whatever. Whoa. That would ruin me. Not only that, time. or and like well, now, what scares me is the the decision that they have to make being yeah. put in these positions. You're gonna like, walk on a tightrope, right? And right. Like, at the same time, like, and I, all these things. I feel like they're body cameras. They're all gonna have body cameras. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. then they'll be okay. But even then, I still think they're reluctant. You know, body cameras or not, I've seen I've seen situations where they, their stuff is videoed and they they still like how they present themselves and how mm-hmm. they go. It's just not a tough, not a not a fun time to be a, a police officer. No, I think it's a very difficult job, extremely difficult, very challenging, very uh, what's the word? It can be traumatizing. You know what I mean? And then also, like, think about it this way: like, let's say you work in a department and somebody gets shot in your department, or something happens where that almost happens. And you have a family, and now you're pulling people over. You can't help but think about that. You know what I mean? Who's the guy that? Yeah. Who does it? Who's the guy that uh, Joe Rogan had on? I wanted to. I meant to. I, oh, we yeah. should. He, I, we never reached out to him. Mm. I wanted to. Have, did you ever listen to that episode? He was, no, he's I like a retired cop. Yeah, and he was talking about. Wasn't he from Baltimore? I think he is I from, feel like Baltimore. He was from Baltimore. Yeah. No, I don't know. He who had this a really is. interesting perspective. What was he saying? He, yeah. No. You. Uh, you would like him. You would like him, dude. He. He came. Uh, God. I'm gonna. He, what was he saying though? What was he saying? No, it's just really intelligent, dude. I don't think he's retired yet. No, 
he has he he's just uh he's countered the 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 typical message that would that would come from a police officer. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I, I think and the way he articulates his opinion, I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. And he's open to debate. He gets a little political and stuff, but I think that the way he explains his point of view on stuff is pretty cool. Oh, right? let's get the name. So we yeah, can no, no, it was it was something we all I think we all or at least I know Justin and I. Yeah. Uh, saw it and was like, oh, we should get him on the show. Okay. Yeah, it's about yeah, a okay. year ago. It would be say. a real interesting conversation okay. for okay. sure. Did yeah. you guys Michael see- something? It was that I think it was Michael something. Okay. I'll look we'll, it up. We'll reach out. Did you guys see the uh, the articles that are coming out on what is now considered low income? In the Bay Area. Oh God! They just recalculated. It's <laughs> like sixty that? grand is like considered <laughs> fucking low income now. One hundred seventeen thousand dollars a year. <laughs> That's considered low income. Up, yeah, one seventeen for a family of four, so it's just a regular family. Wow. One hundred seventeen thousand dollars a year is considered low income. Dude, good luck. Not 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 normal. Low, like you're 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 poor. That's, in the Bay Area. Dude, that's some fucked up that's, shit that's right that there. That's that tech money just thrown in in our well, face. Well, it's the tech money, and then it's the artificially high prices of everything well, in the Bay Area. Inflated everything. These yeah. are our stupid policies that we have, where they, we create this artificial shortage of housing. You know how hard it is, how almost impossible it is to build new yeah. developments because of all the silly regulations that we have. No. Then on top of that, all, all the you know the extra taxes. Like we pay, I don't know how much more we pay for gas, for example. In California than everyone else, dude. So it's like I don't know. Summer's here; it just went up again. Yeah. When my when I fill my tank up, it jumps like an extra twenty, thirty bucks. Come summertime, <laughs> yeah. does it really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Because the price. Oh, yeah, it yeah. hurts. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. But I think the average house in San Jose now is some almost a million dollars average. Mm-hmm. And for people, I believe who don't, it. And for people who don't know the Bay Area, San Jose is not the best city no. in the Bay Area. <laughs> no. That's not the greatest place to live. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if you go to like the nicer places, yeah, you know, like it's Las got Cass. brown hills. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, brown hills. I was up in Palo Alto over the weekend, which is considered an expensive part of the Bay Area, right? I was up in Palo Alto and there was a house for sale. It was a three bedroom shack. So you probably would have to buy it and tear it down to build another house. But it's a three-bedroom shack. I think it was 800 and something square feet. I believe it was $2.5 million. Oh, for a shack? <laughs> yeah, dude. At, at that point, you're playing for the land. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That you literally are just paying for the land. Yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy. It is. I, guess, I mean, do you guys, you guys think we would move if we weren't if we didn't have to stay? I fucking you know, said it all the time, I we, would. We've all, I think we've all pondered that idea. Like, I mean, there's certain places, and I think that's why we like enjoy traveling, because we're like, oh, wow, what, what about this place? You know, yeah. like, presents, like, all these new variables that we can consider, because, like, I'm, I am. It's like, wow, how crazy. He, like, can we go, go from here? Well, so if you guys didn't have if you guys didn't have kids, there's no doubt in my mind for sure I would have convinced everybody to. You live. wouldn't have to convince. I know everybody. it would be very hard to convince you guys because it, it's a, it would be a no brainer where the business is at right now. It would make complete sense to have this somewhere where our our cost of living is 50 percent lower, which would be easy. We could drive four hours and it's already there. I would. Con- and then we bought yep. a badass property on the goddamn beach if you want this life. You know what I'm saying? Like if you yeah. want the beach life, which that's where we're paying for, is to be so goddamn close to the water. So if you want that, if you want that, we could own that and still live somewhere and still make. Yeah, it's more not money. like we're relying on people coming into our facility. No, no, you know? we could do we this anywhere. The fuck we want. Yeah. We could do this anywhere. I would have convinced you guys to to just move around and be like, all right, let's do six months here, just six be a months. A bunch of there. nomads. Absolutely, yeah. a bunch of dude. <laughs> think about it. No all right, responsibilities. All right, Mike Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> I would work though. Uh, I'm not oh, just, that's the difference. Yeah, I'm not just yeah, trying to travel. A big difference. I'm yeah. not just trying to travel around and trip on things. I would actually no, but seriously, like six months here. Think about how fun that would be. No responsibilities, no yeah. whatever. Right. You know what I mean? We podcast. It's all electronic anyway. Oh, Shit. Sounds like an awesome single man's idea. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. It sounds like yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah it's can't, all good. It's can't all good. do it. Yeah, it's all good. Can't do it. Have you? Have you, um, Adam? You asked me about the cordyceps I've been taking. Have you been taking it consistently? I know your workouts are getting pretty good now. No. That if there's anything that I'm inconsistent with with our, our the protocol that you originally gave me for my my testosterone and everything. Uh, the cordyceps, and I just bro combine that with I caffeine know, pre-workout. I know, it's amazing. I know. I'm really good about everything else, you know. And it's it's not a lack of me being lazy. I'm just not a fan of the stuff. It just I'm not a fan of the taste of it. And mm. so that's the only thing that <laughs> You're keeps such me. a baby. I know it. 
<laughs> well, you know what it is? It's like I can, I can. We need Taro to come back. It's yeah. just, like, come on, man. I, yeah. He's like yeah. a dog. Like yeah. you can't give him. You got to like put it in a hamburger or something. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, put yeah. some cheese in. Yeah. 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 Feed Wayne, it to him. Awesome That's why I was so interested in those omega threes yeah, yeah. for the dogs because the fish oil was <laughs> it's flavored with bacon. I was like, fuck, my dogs will eat that shit all day long. Yeah. Right now, I got to trick them to eat the fish. Oh, the fish. Bacon the fish oil. flavored mushrooms, dude. So smart. That yeah. Brilliant. That's what they need to do for me. Combine it. You combine it with caffeine pre workout. So remind Watch what happens. Okay. So remind me of like the the all the benefits that I'm getting from the cordyceps. Well, cordyceps is an adaptogen. So adaptogen is a broad term that is used for herbs and supplements that help bring equilibrium or help the body deal with stress. So when you look at the body and how what happens when you're under a lot of stress over long periods of time, you know, cortisol starts to rise. Uh, other anabolic hormones may depress a little bit. Um, you get increased, you know, uh, markers of inflammation and, you know, a bunch of Basically, bad stuff starts to happen. What it, what adaptogens do is they help the body deal with stress so that l those signals start to lower. So cortisol gets more balanced, less inflammation, and you can basically have a higher capacity for workload, uh, which is why how a lot of people will use them. Like People use adaptogens when they're pushing themselves mm -hmm. really hard. But cordyceps also increase or improve your body's utilization of oxygen and ATP, and so... What you notice with cordyceps is if you're just a heavy lifter, you know, let's say you're training the powerlifting, you know, low rep range type of stuff, you may notice a benefit just from the adaptogenic properties, but really where you get the benefit is in uh, stamina. So right. if you're like higher reps or marathon shorter runners, or well, not just marathon runners, let's say you want to, you want to do, you know, bodybuilding style where it's a little shorter reps, uh, excuse me, rest, you're trying to get a pump, you're doing lots of sets. Super so sets the volume is high. That. Right. That's where you'll notice a difference. So what I notice with cordyceps is when I do, let's say I'm going to do four sets of squats, I and I rest 45 seconds in between. Let's say I'm aiming for a good pump. I could do more reps as a result of that. So and then combine it with caffeine. It's a great little combination. You think I'll feel it right away for sure when I work out? If you because I haven't used it like before a workout. Well, like you know, you might not. I mean, I don't know how are your workouts right now intensity wise because I know you're ramping up. They are. You? They're literally. I could say I can count on one hand how many like great workouts where I walk away. You know, you have one of those workouts and you're like, that was yeah. a good workout. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you put know, it I, in. Today. Yeah, that's yeah. that's just now happening to me in this last week. So I'm finally getting these great workouts. It feels good. So I'm just now catching my momentum right now. I would say you, you might notice now or maybe wait until you're really pushing yourself. Yeah, I'm not. You'd notice I'm definitely not there. I'm not where I'm like crushing every workout for, you know, a good solid two weeks in a row. I sh I'd like You've to be You've gained there. a lot of mass, dude. I feel good, man. How much on the scale? What do you So you I weighed 217 this morning. So that's a good weight for me right now. What were you weighing before all that? Oh, um, you were like 210 not too long ago. Yeah, no, I got you? as low as I got as low as 207. Okay. So 207 was the lightest I'd seen on this. And I was a soft 207, right? 207 and I was mushy. You, you, I know, you know, like I know a, the scale says 10 like pounds. One of those like 20-year-old girls that doesn't work out, you yeah, know, like that like squishy feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how I yeah. felt. I don't like that. Yeah. You, um, you, you say 10 pounds on the scale, but you look like you gained more like 15. Really? Yeah, oh, but yeah. It, but it, I think it's because flirting is really like a lot today. Yeah, you know what I mean, no. I'm not. <laughs> you guys, are you jealous? Because we've been making fun of you lately, and <laughs> yeah. we've been complimenting yeah, each you other. Just a lot? Oh, yeah, you're fucking awesome. Oh, first you're awesome. of all, no, first you're of all, big. I may oh, say I may say you're heavy uh, in the seat, but I like that. Uh, yeah. It's not compliment. Let's talk shit about Justin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I hear. Like the last few episodes. You know why he's mad, dicks. dude? That post you did. Yeah, the Pillsbury Doughboy one. It's such a good photo, though. It is. though. it's perfect. I love it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, and then, so he looked, and then he did your as mom. As much joke. as I say, I love it, dude. Bring yeah. it, bro. Your mom joke that you did for it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I good. gotta throw it back. Dude. You gotta Come go on, if you don't follow us on Instagram. You gotta go there because just for the because we talk shit to each other. Yeah, we, we gotta, we do, gotta more, do more of that. We gotta do more. Of we that. used to do it a lot when we first started. Yeah. We, well, when we had a lot of extra time, when we had more time. We were hanging out on Instagram. There you know is. what? That's, that's gonna, the difference. I'm gonna make a concentrated effort now to talk shit more shit to you guys. Let's ramp it up. Like the shit talking wars. We'll stop when someone cries. I'm ready, dude, because I've been <laughs> I've been saying, getting a lot. You know what I mean? I'm ready to dish it out. I don't know. I feel like I got a lot for a while there. Bro, I got hit by we the- were sensitive. I mean, you were in a, in a low place, dude. <laughs> what, were we going to kick you when you're down? Yeah, that's true. You we had to mean? be nice. We had to be all yeah. sensitive. It wasn't a good time. Yeah. Bro, I just got talked shit to by the fucking main mind pump page, fucking Taylor's deodorant <laughs> post. <laughs> 
You know what's funny? Dude, it's not as bad as the shrinking one that she did of me, dude. What did she do? Oh, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. As Mind Pump gets bigger, Adam gets smaller. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, like this, I like, know. That was oh. a direct yeah. hit right there. Yeah, I just sent her a message like, hey, don't forget to fucking cut your checks every <laughs> fucking month. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> you see? Yeah. Dude, that's, I, swear, I swear there was one about me, too. Dude. I forget what it is. Dude, though. let me say oh, something. Like, no. this is, okay, one time, one time I had B.O. and you guys had to fucking make uh. jokes about... <laughs> <laughs> you got to make jokes about that shit all the time. Well, I was, I was bro, literally, I, I literally saw you though. Remember when we were doing that like Orange Theory? That's when it happened. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no. You, you went and put deodorant on. You, you put just it had a second time just the other day. So where were gross. Where were we at? We were on our way to Pajaro Dunes. Oh, I called myself out. Yeah, you did yeah. call yourself yeah, out. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. none of us knows. But then you lifted your arm. You're like, I think I might. And then we're like, Oh uh, shit! Uh, yeah, bro. All right, two yeah, times. That was, <laughs> okay. That was impre- That was an impressive uh, odor. Yeah, it's not. Um, it was very powerful. It's just I have a lot of pheromones. You know I mean? uh, yeah, do, you, do you ever do you ever get worried that you will start to get used to your own kind of smell no, like that, no, no, and then no. you'll, it'll be less obvious? Yeah. No, no, no. That's no. what I always. I think sometimes it's very rare. Here's what happens. Uh, I think, happen. dude. No, no. Here's what happens. We talk about adaptation all the time. How does how do you, how do you not think yeah. that you you will get your sense your, your nostril receptors? First of all, for sure, you guys will tell me, yes. and so I know that, <laughs> yeah. and it's only really been twice. <laughs> That's why but, you need friends like us. But here's the deal. This is what, and this is true. Now you can look this up. This real science show this. When you're nervous or stressed out, so let's say you lack sleep or you just, you know, you're stressed out from work or you're nervous or anxious about something, it changes the microbiome on your skin. And so when you sweat, you it always got to find, a, different find smell. a science spin on it for oh, really? to back up. Hold on a second. All right, nervous Nancy. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> well, start, calling I was, it, start calling him nervous Nancy. Yeah. I was, ang- no, 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 it it's true. It excites the bacteria. And I was, they get all crazy and they run. Oh, you, make, <laughs> you gotta make the, ner- the nerdy voice. Yeah, one hundred percent science. <laughs> it's listen. I was anxious at the 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 presentation we did at uh, Orange Theory. <laughs> you can say on ner- way nervous, to, Nancy. You could say yeah. nervous, uh, whatever. Okay. And then on the way to, to Pajaro Dunes, I hadn't had any sleep the night before. I was very stressed out. That's what. Yeah. Remember, I fell asleep in the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, or you'd be using that hippie paste all the time, uh, and that shit just does. It works for about four true. hours, really good. Yeah. But heaven forbid bid you actually do any real work yeah. for that day and it's, you, it's I, not hippie paste the only thing i appreciate is you don't try crystal. to mask it up with like patchouli oil you know that's when it's like oh come on, I love come on bro come no on. it's the crystal bro it's no. the salt yeah no you don't you don't smell you yeah. don't smell yeah. and you're not yeah, you're not clear like, it up thank yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> fuck god damn it that's <laughs> yeah, a handful of times <laughs> oh hey dude i'm you know i'm i don't want to speak too soon on this but I, th- yesterday was my second injection of the bp157 bb7 why do what I keep saying? Or BBC, BBC, BBC. I, I'm missing the C, huh? I keep BBC. saying BP157. Yeah, because BP157 yeah, is a totally different compound. Yeah, sorry. You should write yeah, it on your yeah. forehead. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know what it is. BP157. <laughs> yeah. BPC157. Mm-hmm. I know I keep fucking that up. I took it. That's why I took a picture on my story so people could see what it is. But uh, I this I'm on my second injection into the Achilles, and uh, bro, I don't know. The last two days, and I you asked me, and I said I like, I hate and you know me, I'm very I'm skeptical about yeah. everything, so. I, I don't like to jump to conclusions that I already feel better, but what I can say is I know that it, since the injury, anytime I do uh, 10,000 or more steps, I definitely feel it. It feels the next day I feel like someone's kind of stuck a knife right in my Achilles and it, 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 to the point where sometimes if I've pushed to like 14, 15,000 steps, mm-hmm. which I've done a couple of times, uh, I, I'll be limping a little bit the next day. So that's how bad it, I still feel right with this. And I've done back-to-back days, good hard training days, where I've also stepped over thirteen thousand steps, and I feel no pain right now. Mm-hmm. So, yet I don't. You know, we'll see how it goes as I start to progress through. And I'm only two injections in right now. I'm every every other day right now. Mm. But uh, well, pretty- so and you when I did we, I did a. A YouTube video with Ben Greenfield where I actually asked him about this. Oh, you talked with Ben about this? I did on one of our YouTube videos, and he explained how it works. And my concern, because I do, now here's the deal. First off, we need oh, to be great. clear. Now here comes the concerns. Well, after I've been telling I've started. you. I've been telling you. Dude. Yeah, there was no concerns when I was getting it. Well, that's because I want to see if what happens. Well, first, <laughs> You're a guinea pig. No, dude. no, no, no. Yeah. Here's the deal. I uh, and I asked him this when we were, uh, you know, when we did the video. And first off, we need to be clear. This is not a mind pump approved uh, substance. Yeah, yeah, no. We're not, I, we're not I think, I think anytime I do anything, we all agree on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we throw Adam just out yeah. there. Yeah, well, the no, we, we need to be careful because it's, it is a research chemical. It's not approved by, you know, right. there's, there's not there's, tons and tons of study on it. 
but the mechanism by which it works could, in my opinion, potentially drive, you know, tumor growth or you know maybe increase cancer. Yeah, proliferation. But, what, well, but what doesn't these days? Well, here's the deal. What, I what, said that to Ben. In a pro-cancerous place, right? Yeah, what? and Ben and Ben said, well, it depends on context. Like if you're in this pro in this pro-cancer environment. Right. And I get that. It's the same thing with um mammalian target rapamycin, um mTOR. You know what's funny? I forgot the acronym, but I remember the whole <laughs> stupid name. Anyway, yeah. mTOR, which is stimulated uh, through increased protein intake and other stuff, which does drive muscle growth, also will drive cancer cell uh, growth and proliferation, but in the context of actual cancer. If you don't have cancer, it's probably not going to do that. So that's what he said, but there's not a lot of science supporting. Plus, here's the deal. You use it for a short period of time. It's not something you use all the time, right? You do it for like 20 days and then you're done. Yeah, yeah so... Anyway, I just want to put that caveat out there for people. Yeah, to pay thank attention. you. So it could, yeah. could cause cancer, Adam. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. asshole. You might, get, you might get Achilles cancer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Someone's got to be the you're, guinea pig around here. Adam's gonna be like, dude, my my fucking calf is getting huge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a tumor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's ripped. That's yeah. not a yeah. That's not that's not your thing. Anyway. I'm gonna have you do it though. Yeah. I, I figured that I, I brought it into the. You studio. want me to do it for you? Yeah, I brought it in the studio, and I figured we we could shoot some footage on there. Uh, of of me actually taking it and what we're doing and how much of it and all that good stuff. Oh, I, I, get, I get to give you an injection. Yeah, Ooh. it's a, di- that's the next it's a level, diabetic Justin. needle. So I know I don't trust you like that. That's the next level. Yeah, I could hook you up too. No, give you like a B twelve right in that <laughs> yeah. right in cheeks. Have It'd you be shot, easy to give have a you shot? shot B12 we did that. At, well, yeah, we did. What was the injections we did at uh, oh, Paleo Fx yeah. in the in the butt? Dude, my butt was sore for like a day and a half. Yeah, I don't know if it was worth it. Yeah, that, and I didn't do shit for me. I yeah. felt good. I know you did. I, I did. I felt really good you, for you. Love that kind of uh-huh. stuff. Yeah, uh-huh. you're. Yeah, well, you're. What's what's? I could, I, it's a hundred. I probably placebo, but I felt. Yeah, really good. yeah. You're definitely yeah. The, that, the. What's it called? The hypochondriac with it comes with the. I am far more sensitive to the to my body for sure. I do notice one thing or how things will affect me very quickly. I think because of that too, you overanalyze a lot of mm-hmm. things. Uh, that's mm-hmm. one or the other, right? Right, they right. Feed each like other. sometimes, like you're right on. Like, whoa, that's crazy. You picked up on that, but then other mm-hmm. times, you're like, no, bro, you're crazy. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's true. I don't know which one, which one it is, which yeah. one feeds. I you tend other. to keep you normal and let mm-hmm. you know. Like, yeah, eh, it's a bunch of bullshit, bro. Yeah. I don't know if I. You always that. say that. <laughs> I don't know. My ass. I don't always say that. I just say when you say certain things, and I'm like, no, I don't. I don't believe that you can tell that because there's too many other variables that I know yeah. that that same feeling that you have yeah. could have manipulated. Maybe. That. Mm. Yeah. I've been having fucking monster workouts. Oh, you love it. What, what phase are you in split right now? I'm still in phase one. <laughs> Uh, but you know, phase one of split is a little bit different than the way I treat phase one of anabolic. So with anabolic, I tend to go real low reps and, and push the, you know, singles and doubles. Mm-hmm. And with with uh, split, because it's more bodybuilder focused, I'm I'm still keeping it around five, five or six, cool. which is mm-hmm. which is still low reps, yeah, it's but it's low. not as low. Right. Now the only exercise that I consistently will typically train three reps or lower is deadlifts just because I've learned with my body deadlifts I do really I, they treat me really well when I do that yeah. when I start to go high reps with deadlifts oh yeah it's it, it's a tough place to be it, it fries me a little bit and um it, I don't know it doesn't seem to work as well for me but uh, like this morning I was pulling 525 dude I haven't pulled in the mid fives in a long time are you up to that with your hook grip too hook grip wow yeah, 525 wow yeah and I ripped that fucker right off the floor so I think I'll be able to get in the high fives if uh, within a couple months, if if, if so, long, so long as my gut health maintains, which I think it will. I have my my seventy two hour fast coming up this weekend. Um, I think I'll I be. I can't able believe to how good you've got with that hook grip, dude. I'm terrible at that, bro. You just got to learn the technique. I know. Once you get the technique, it's actually and you got to be consistent with it. it just yeah. doesn't feel. It feels weird uh-huh. for, oh, yeah. at first, dude. Super awkward. I, I did it for a little while, and I'm like, I just can't. It was just I was frustrated. I had to do it, dude. Yeah. I had to learn how to I do it. it. I've been pulling so long, heavy with uh, supinated right and a mm-hmm. pronated left. Yeah. That I can literally Is there causing asymmetry. A little bro, bit? I can I can feel it in my back. Yeah. Like if yeah. I lean up against the wall. My right erector spinae, right below my thoracic and above my lumbar, so kind of in that that mid low area, is thicker than it is on my left. Yeah. I for sure have caused a fucking imbalance through years of sure. being hard headed and, and and not switching as you know every single lift. And so I'm trying to balance it out by going hook grip. You know what I mean? I don't want to be crooked. Yeah, I just I stopped pulling that heavy to where I needed to go. I, I, I go as far as I can with over, over. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not worried about it right so now. So when I mm-hmm. do the hook grip, they teach to use the, the what, index and middle finger on the thumb. Mm-hmm. doesn't work for me. I just have to, I, I can only do index, but it works much better. 
So maybe practice like that okay. and see what happens. Yeah, I'll try. And I got really, uh, you know what really helped me with that was the snatch grip uh, high pulls when mm-hmm. I was practicing those yep. because your your hands are so wide that- It forces it to that position. Well, all the strength is in these three fingers because you're so wide. You have yeah. very little yeah, in the You pinky. have nothing with the pinky and the ring finger uh-huh. really contributing. And because you're going such high reps, yeah. you know, because I was doing 15 reps like that, my hands would, your hands are going to fatigue when you're ripping fast for high reps. They're just going to fatigue- and so I got really good with this, with these three fingers, these first three fingers yeah, or whatever. Man, that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Justin, you don't, you don't hook grip, do you? No. I, yeah, I, I, like I said, I've, I tried for a little bit, and it was just so awkward and alien to me that I just kind of like let it go. And, and like, like you, I do a lot of more just like double over, mm. and then I go to wherever I can go, and then I'm done. Well, what, what's, what's ex- what I'm excited about is because, I, because I'm, I'm healthier, because I'm training this particular way and my body's responding, I'm pushing the calories – and I'm not going crazy like I used to. I'm much better with it. But I'm pushing more calories than I, than I have in a long time, which is why I think my strength's going up and all that. Yes. And I'm excited for when I start to drop them back down, which I'm going to do within a, within a couple months to see how my body reacts in terms of getting lean. Because mm-hmm. I'm maintaining relatively good leanness right now, and I know my metabolism is amping up because I'm bumping up the calories. When I cut them down, I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna get shred. Well, I can't fast. wait just to see you move into the next phase where you're you're doing like kind of hypertrophy yeah. mm-hmm. type training. It'll be interesting to see how well, your body starts to shape. Well, up. so Jessica's following my. Uh, she's following the lead with that, and so she's been pushing her calories. And what's interesting is she's eating. I mean, she's eating like 2,500 calories a day probably, and her body weight is like she's maintaining it like 120, 121 pounds. So her metabolism is just amping the fuck up right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see what happens with her. Cause when she, even if she just comes down to 1900 or 1800, see what happens. Justin, what's going on with your routine right now? Yeah, I'm adding. It's funny because I was just gonna contribute and be like, oh, this is kind of like we're all in this like same cycle, menstruation, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> we're all sharing together because I'm I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm adding calories and and I'm I'm experiencing a lot more energy in. My workouts are finally like ramping up intensity wise again too, which is like really it it of course you know you get the the those feelings like the testosterone feelings like come back where you feel charged and energized and like I could fucking you know get back to my my lifting like sets of ones and and you know and do that again so that's what I'm doing um, I'm doing more anabolic phase one style like personally so I'm, I'm just getting back in I haven't like actually tried to just barbell train heavy in, in a while I've been doing a lot of like functional movement and stuff that was a little more a little less intensive so getting just, back in it just goes to show if you stay in one like if you push calories and train heavy <laughs> For a long period of time, not only does that shit stop working, but your body stops being optimal in the sense that, like, you keep pushing calories, your hormone levels will, t- t- testosterone starts to drop mm-hmm. if you eat too much for too long. Mm-hmm. But it also starts to drop if you eat too little and that's for too happening. long. Yeah. Or if you train a particular way for too long. It just goes to show that the human body evolved in a constant state of flux. Mm-hmm. There, Think about this. There was never. You know, for most of of the time that humans have been on Earth, there was never really a period of a long, long period of time where everything was the same. It was always either the seasons changed, so diet had to change. We had more food, we had no food. You know, I'm hunting this animal at this time. Now I have to focus on agriculture, you know, or maybe fish or whatever. So it's like our the human body thrives off of that off that flux. It just makes sense to do the like we advocate many many cuts and many bulks. Versus staying in, in one, because I'll tell you right now, if 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 because right now we're feeling good because we're able to eat more and we're pushing the weight. If we keep doing this, let's say we do this for seven, eight, nine, ten months, we're gonna start getting feeling like shit. Right, right. You right. know, and you'll start to, and then you'll feel amazing. Here's what'll happen: push this for a while, and then say, okay, I'm gonna start to cut a little bit and maybe go higher reps or whatever, and we're gonna get that same feeling again. Where oh shit, I feel great. Everything feels amazing. Yeah. Well, this this sparks the the debate that I think a lot of people have right now, which is the is it better for us to eat more and speed up our metabolism or let our bodies get adapted to a lower amount of calories and what's better for overall health and survival? Both. And yeah, no, I, I'm really I'm intrigued by because I look at I know like uh, I know Mark Sisson and Chris Kresser they come from kind of the camp of like eat as minimal as possible type of deal. I know those guys don't eat a lot of calories. Yeah. And I and I felt fine like the way I was eating. I was eating one time, sometimes two times a day tops just in the last like eight months or so. And, you know, I felt okay. And I felt my body get used to that and get adapted and I didn't notice a big difference. But man, I tell you what, like the reintroduction of just a couple cups of rice every Dude, single day is just- Same this- here with like potatoes and because like- 
inevitably when I was going through the process of eliminating gluten and these types of things from my diet, it's like you, the, the carbs go way down, you know? And, it, yeah. and so I was like all fat, all protein. Like that was like the only thing. And then, um, because I knew like that I wasn't moving as much by sitting here and doing podcasts and like, this is more of a routine thing that, you know, I just started to cut calories quite a bit and then I would go work out. I have no energy in my workouts. And then it's just, that was affecting, you know, how everything was going. And so now reintroducing it, it's like, it's charging everything back and I'm well, there's, motivated. There's, there's longevity and then there's performance and quality of life. And yes, eating less calories and leading a life that is, you know, moderate stress and you're not pushing yourself that hard and whatever. Will that improve longevity? Probably. But for a lot of people, it also decreases your quality of life. I don't know. I like, I don't I like, know. I, like I don't, I don't know if I fully agree that it would improve longevity. I don't know. Statistic. Well, look, studies and you're, and you're, look, you're right because there isn't excellent, great science on this, but the science that we do have suggests uh, that, that, that would be the case. However, right. and, and I know, and I get, because I, I, I've listened to both Mark and Chris kind of talk about this before, and I get where they're coming from on 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 this. But the quality of life is not is not the same. It, it's not the same. No. And hold on a second, you actually may have a point. Do you think? Because this is this is just occurring to me. Does quality of life and enjoyment of a quality of life could that potentially contribute to a longer life as well? I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. I think yeah. it definitely could. How about this? What if you go extreme with that, and because of it, your you're weak and your energy is low, would that increase your risk of mobility issues, arthritis, and potential injury? And could those be a detriment to longevity? Absolutely. Right. Right. Actually, one of the number one things, one of the big killers of, of people as they get older is immobility and injury. I mean, what's the old saying, right? Break your hip and die of pneumonia. Yeah. Like when you're when when you get older, if you when you lose strength, that's like one of the that's the first thing that happens. Everything else follows that. Like you start to lose strength. And mobility, and then you hurt yourself yeah, or twist something fast downward hill very, very quickly. Have you guys ever had an old client that yeah. is it, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I had I've trained because I used to train a lot it's of sad man. Yeah, I used to train a lot right of older clients, of and when they would have an injury and or they got sick, and I wouldn't see them, I wouldn't see them for you know three weeks. Like you don't see a 30 year old for three weeks, and they come back, yeah, they get more sore, and there's a little loss or whatever, but it comes back. You you train someone to 75 years old and they don't come in for three or four weeks and then they come back in, do, different person. Yeah. Totally different person. The decline is is dramatic. So so I mean, you could have a point there, you know? You could definitely have a point. You need to be able to feel well, a little bit. Of it's never fully added up to me. And I and I and of course I'm going off of my experience of clients that I've trained and then my my personal experience. So I, I don't have anything to prove otherwise. But it just doesn't seem to add up, dude. It just mm -hmm. the way I feel when you know, I know, I'm very aware of what I felt like when I was only eating X amount of calories, which it was probably, even though I wasn't tracking, it was probably somewhere around the 1,700 to 2,200 calories, right? And I was maintaining that. And I and I, what I was really doing was I was adjusting my calories to the lack of movement that I was. I couldn't move anymore because of my injury and stuff. So, you know, I walked to my car, I walked to my room. I, I mean, I was getting like 2,000 steps a day. I was very sedentary. Uh, so I lowered, so I lowered my calories, so I didn't put on a bunch of bad weight and stuff like that. But, yeah. and I felt fine and normal. I could do my job. I wasn't falling asleep in the middle of the day and shit like that. It wasn't bad. Like my body seemed okay, but you know, I noticed a significant difference in 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 my energy level, in my strength, in my motivation, in my libido. Like these things are all, and that's all quality of life, right? That's all quality, right? Of life. And yeah. you, I would think that I would think that's to, I feel, and that that my mental state is better too because of it. Like, mm -hmm. and I didn't necessarily feel like I had a bad mental state just six months ago. Yeah, but you feel the contrast, right? Exactly. That's the, that's what I'm trying to point out. Yeah. Like and it makes mm -hmm. sense too that mm -hmm. you know your testosterone levels and stuff's gonna <clears throat> gonna drop, and your drive to procreate is gonna drop too because your body's kind of sensing that there may not be enough resources for right. an additional Scarcity. child. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you start. And, and you said Mark Sisson talks about this. Isn't he on testosterone replacement therapy or uh, testosterone? Is yes. he? I don't know. He looks like it. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know if he is yeah, or not. I have not. Yeah, speculate. I don't know if he is or Google not. That, so I don't Doug. want to speculate. I don't think that's true. I don't. I don't. Or at least I've never heard that. That's interesting. Well, that'd be an, it'd be a compliment. I you would, know if he's not anyway. based off of how he looks. I would say he's on hormones. How old is My, he? How old is he? Yeah, only because he's yeah. in his fifties. Yeah. He, you know? he he doesn't look that great for. I mean, Paul Check looks like he's on some sure. gear compared to him. Yeah, no, no, he does. I mean, Paul, Paul looks incredible. Yeah, no, Paul but, looks. But knowing what you know about gear, and you look at him, do you think he would look like he's on gear, or does he look more like just a fucking super optimal healthy individual? Oh man, 
Yeah, let's get some pictures up here so yeah. I can make that. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, this is all. You can't Google Mark Sisson? I can. You just can't see it. I can't get this TV to work. Uh, oh, yeah. There God we go. Damn Those it. technical God difficulties. damn it, Doug. <laughs> There goes that don't stress, conversation. Don't, stre- don't stress, yeah. him, stress him out. <sighs> Doug gets all stressed out about. No, he's fucking shredded, bro. Look, look, yeah, look. He's, Here you go. I'll he's show pretty you diced. See? Okay. Yeah. And how old is he? Nobody knows how old he is? 60, I think. He's 60, huh? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know what I like about this podcast is I guarantee you someone who's listening right now knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll, yeah, and we'll yeah. send it to it. Yep. Yeah, anyway. What was your point, though, if he, if he is? Well, if he's talking about longevity um, and he's, you know, taking hormones, I mean, most, I mean, that doesn't necessarily fit with that narrative. I mean, it, I, or does it? Mm, if it's low, right, if he's right. low, yeah. But if he was healthy, no, not right. really. Right. Yeah, well, so. I don't know. Again, too, it would be depend on where, what levels he's taking and everything. Like that. And again, it's quality of life, right? That's always the argument. Yeah. Because I know, I know, who was it that I was talking to? Um, Somebody I was talking to said that when she ate, when she gets older, she's going to look into hormone replacement for herself because of the quality of life, because she'll feel better having more youthful levels of, of hormones. Oh, Katrina like, said that, has said that before. Has she really? Yeah. Dr. Oh, yeah. Molly, I think, said that. She's, did she yeah. say that? Oh, yeah. Dr. Yeah, yeah, Molly, Dr. Did, Dr. she might have said that she on She said it episode. too. Yeah, no, that's a... I mean, that was part of why... Uh, I'm, not, I'm personally not uh, shut off from that potential if that were, you know, as I got older. But, you know, meeting someone like Paul makes me feel hopeful because right. you've got a guy who's, you know, how old is Paul now? 55, yeah. 56? got to keep doing it, man. You know? And yeah. what's that video? He just posted a video of himself working out with his shirt off. Oh, the Bulgarian bag. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah, the he, fuck out of here. Yeah, no, he looks yeah, amazing. That shit. The guy looks insane. Yeah, no, he does look Skin amazing. looks all perfect. You know, the, yeah. the two wife thing could be the formula for that, though. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> could be. That, that I, could be an X factor I, that you didn't consider. I disagree. Uh, I, I, I've dude. been married. I feel like two wives would make yeah, you age yeah, faster. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have hair. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah so there's maybe that. Maybe he lost dude. all his hair. Yeah. So, maybe. So there's that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Bring on the bird. Do it. Bird. This quaz brought to you by Organify. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from AC Longyear. The last MAPS program I ran through was HIT, which I purposely tried because it was very different from what I'm used to. I'm pregnant now and finally have energy to lift. MAPS Red has been my go-to program for years and what I'm focusing on lately since I have more energy. What program should I set my body up for for the next five months and post-baby? Would MAPS Anywhere be a good program now? Intrigued by Black or Split for post-baby? Ooh, I love so this is uh, Angela. She's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Absolutely love her. Um, she's I love been, Black than Split. That's yeah, why I'm biased a yeah, little bit. Yeah. She's been following. You know, it's, she's been. She was the. <clears throat> pro, I think she was the first female to test out maps uh, for me. So when I first oh created she was an, one of the girls you gave it to one of the girls I gave the first uh, rendition of to to test and um, so she's been following the programming for a while. She looks phenomenal. Very very strong muscular. They actually have a gym in their basement uh, that's got all the equipment they need and everything. But, you know, here's the thing about, about pregnancy. Do what you can while you're pregnant. And what I mean by that is, well, first off, the thing you don't want to do, mm. and this is not for Angela. This is for anybody else who's listening who gets pregnant and decides to start a fitness is program. ramp it up while you get pregnant. Oh. Yeah, like you're not trying to hit goals. No, 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 no. no. Or, or go other steps. That's what I see as extremes. I either see women get pregnant and they freak out, oh, shit, I'm going to put on this weight. And so all of a sudden they start doing shit they weren't doing before. Yeah, like sign up for a marathon. Right, or get yeah. shit. sign up for like an Orange Theory class or some shit like that. Something high intensity out of nowhere, which they weren't doing in that. Or... They go the other route where they use the pregnancy thing as an excuse to not do anything and just fucking eat for two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like both of those right. are detrimental. It's like really just the goal should be to try and maintain the momentum that you had going into pregnancy. And hopefully you did a good job and, of and just, training heading into And it. just least listen to your body. Absolutely. Just listen to your body. Like at mm-hmm. some point, your your belly's going to get start to get bigger and it's going to start to change the your, your recruitment patterns and... The exercises you can do, for example, and I'm going to give you a crazy example, but let's say you're doing hang cleans. You're not going to do hang cleans with a big pregnant belly. You're going to hit your, you're going to hit yeah, the belly. Yeah, little, just not going to work. In the way. Yeah, you're not going to do crunches and you're not going to do lots of direct ab work because yeah. you can't. The, the abs are stretched and distended. 
Right. And you're not going to have any tons of mobility lose, in your lumbar. Inevitably, you're going to lose connection. You you're going to lose some connection. And that's just that's just part of the process. And so, yeah, you just have to work with what you can work with. And like it, whatever you were doing previous to that, especially with resistance training, as much as possible, like maintain that, mm-hmm. you know, throughout the process. And then calm down when your body tells you to calm down. Resistance training is so – it is – it's the best form of exercise. If you had to pick one form of exercise, it's the best for everybody. And this is true for pregnancy as well. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it helps maintain your insulin sensitivity, which when women are pregnant, sometimes one of the problems that they have is they get this kind of pre-diabetic state where, you know, that's why they do those, those, those sugar tests with, uh, with women when they, when they get pregnant Mm -hmm. and muscle, uh, improves insulin sensitivity better than anything. It also keeps the metabolism, Amped up, so post pregnancy, you know, it's easier to get the, the weight off. It also Dude, maintains- it helps you through the process too. I mean, being strong, you through have labor, to be strong. like yeah, you got to be strong, man. It's it's super fucking crazy experience. And and then strength through mobility. One of the other things that happens when you get pregnant is the changes in your hormones actually increases the the range of motion or the lax that you feel in your joints. And this is just to to, to help the process of childbirth. So. You may find as a pregnant woman that your flexibility improves, that you have more ranges of motion, and that's not a good thing if you don't have strength in that new range of motion. Yeah, absolutely. This is the reason why pregnant women many times will have hip pain or back pain or other types of pain because their joints are more lax. They're they don't have the mobile without hyper, strength. That's it, and they don't have the strength within that range of motion. Resistance training combats that directly. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing deep squats and I have a, good, a weight that I can control and I'm building strength in these new ranges of motion, the, 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 my risk of injury because of my increased flexibility is much lower. Mm-hmm. Resistance training does that very well. The other thing about resistance training is this. It's extremely modifiable and you don't have to do a lot of it. In other words, you know, if you're an average person and you, know, you want to have a basic workout routine, like it's, it's not something you have to do every single day. I used to, the pregnant women that I used to train on average would lift weights with me two days a week and some of them three days a week. Very rarely would I, would any of them train more than that. Maybe somebody who's super advanced and you get great results with that. And that's awesome when you're pregnant and you, you're busy and all this other shit that's going on, Right. you know, rather than having to work out, you know, every so now we've, we've taken all the pregnant women through what you can do while you're pregnant and right. what not to do. So now she's talking post right. where, where would we direct her to go? So and, I know her and I know how fit she is. Right. And what I would say is black keep, and split. Yeah. I would say, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and then post pregnancy, I would go, uh, prime and prime pro. And then when your body heals and you're ready to rock and roll, then I would do maybe pre-phase of MAPS anabolic for three to four weeks and then jump into MAPS uh, uh, aesthetic or MAPS split. And the reason being is in MAPS anabolic, I put a- Oh, I definitely do aesthetic before split because the volume, because you are you may as well use that. You you could do aesthetic. You're already going to see good change in yeah. your body. And then when you go to split, you're going to continue to that because of the volume increase. Yeah, so. that's a good comp. But, but you know, I put a pre-phase section in MAPS anabolic, which I, I designed for- people to get them used to, you know, being able to increase their volume and move into phase one, all that stuff. And I love using pre-phase for people when they're off a layoff or, and these are people who've already worked out before. So someone like her, I would say, okay, do pre-phase MAPS anabolic for three to four weeks. When you start to feel good, uh, which she will, because she's got such a good training background. Mm -hmm. Then like you said, jump in. That's a really good point because I, I shared on my Insta story, like some of the, what I was doing and I wasn't following our exact protocol in the pre-phase of MAPS Red, but I think this is important to share with people because let's be honest, most people fall on and off. You know, mm-hmm. you're consistent for a while, then you fall off for a while. I think uh, a mistake that a lot of people make is they go right into an, an intense program, you know, and they, they start training that way. There's no need to, if you haven't been training for two or three months, or sometimes even less, but say two or three months, you haven't been lifting consistently then jumping right into even like a MAPS anabolic or MAPS green or MAPS red or MAPS black, I think is even too much volume. You know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. not necessary. Like, Dude, MAPS anabolic pre- pre-phase is yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's exactly what I designed it for, and that's how I coach clients is I have them do uh, MAPS anabolic. Because pre-phase is basically, it's a basic full body workout three days a week focused on the main lifts. Just well, you mentioned and- you mentioned Prime Prime Pro. I would also say, and she she mentioned Maps Anywhere w- yeah. w- would be a great transition. You know, sort of an in 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 between that. Yeah. You know, jumping from the pre phase. So 
but just because it it'll help to kind of get you back in, connected to your body and that body awareness will come back and you'll feel like how you know everything will fire again and and the, the sequence of that so wherever you know uh, the deficiencies lied, you know, as, as you, as you went through the process, like you can regain that again. Yeah. It's so great. Cause there's no, it's not like there's a, there's a wrong way to no. incorporate that, you know, cause I, I, that's a great point that you're making right now, but I think of like, I like to use anywhere after I've ramped up a ton of volume that I've been lifting a ton of weights, a lot of barbell movements, mm-hmm. a lot of this, and I've been it's ramping like up. Ramp- yeah. It's like a deload. For, yeah. It's a deload program for me is how I use it. So you just reminded me of a fucking study I just read that's crazy they need to do more studies on this but it's, so it's not conclusive but what they did is they were studying uh, muscle memory mm. right muscle memory is when you work out and you build or whatever then you take a long break you lose all that muscle then you go back and work out again how fast it comes and how there. fast it comes back and we've all experienced this like the, the second time that you build something or the third time way faster than the first time, way faster. Well, examples where I'm at right now. It took my whole life to get over 200 pounds, and, <laughs> and I can go from 207 to 217 in literally a few weeks. Real so. quick, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, same for me. Same thing for me, right? So, so check out what the study did. They had a bunch of men working out. I don't remember how long, but it was a decent period of time. <clears throat> then they told them all no lifting weights for seven weeks. So for seven weeks, they all took and went sedentary, hmm. and they lost a decent amount of strength and muscle. Then they went back to working out. Not only did they gain back the strength and muscle in a very short period of time, they gained more than they had actually lost. <sighs> they actually gained more wow. muscle than they lost. Now, this is a trip because it, it suggests that taking- This is what we talked about the other day where we talk about take scheduling like a week or two off where you don't do anything at all and just allow your well, body to- Well, dude, uh, absolutely. And you know- it Sounds I've, even longer. How many times I've talked about looking at the wisdom of old time lifters and old time bodybuilders. Mm-hmm. And that is something that they used to talk about. They used to talk about taking off you know, a month out of the year or two or three weeks out of the year- and scheduling it in because they noticed that they would get better results. This is something they used to talk about. Uh, even as even as early or as not that long ago, even if you look at someone like Kevin Lavrone, who was one of the top Olympia competitors, he was known for going off completely for like a couple months and then lifting, and everybody would always trip out at how quickly his body would respond. Everybody was like, oh, it's just genetics. Crazy study, right? Yeah, that, that is, is crazy. Yeah, really, really instant. I might try something like that. I don't know if I can go that long without working out, but I might yeah. try. What's the longest you have gone in the last – 10 years. Mm, mm. If I travel like a week or two, I, I usually don't take- Wow, that's the longest? Yeah, I'm trying to think right now. I don't take time off. Yeah. I just enjoy doing it. So it's not like I take. I don't yeah. take time off because I enjoy doing it so much. I've probably done like three weeks. I mean, maybe a month. Mm. Once, yeah, I'm trying to think of- That was probably like you know a year or two ago. Mm. But yeah, I remember that specifically because it was like, wow, this is weird. Um, you know, just getting away from the gym and it was purposeful too. It was Did just you get like, fat just, or were you just like weak? No, just weak. You just got just weak. weak. Yeah, my body mass didn't really change much. I just got squishy. Change the know? body composition? Yeah. Well, think about it. Like what a trippy, and I would really only apply to people who are super consistent because inconsistent people, I don't think it's going to work. Because they they, just, well, they stop more than they. That's what I yes. think, did I share this on the podcast? I don't know. Or we did talked about this off air. I don't remember. Uh, you know, I only had one client that I ever scheduled time off, like because I really feel like ninety percent of the people out there have a hard enough time. You don't need being, to do that. Yeah, being consistent for longer than a few months. That's as it the is. real challenge, right? So I so I don't really speak to it that often, but I do remember having a client that was extremely dedicated, very disciplined. I mean, and trained religiously, and I and I trained her for years, and I remember. Telling her, I remember we hit kind of a, a plateau, and I'd already manipulated a bunch of things in her programming and nutrition. I was like, you know what? We maybe do just for some you time off. Like, I want you to take just two weeks off. And she was like, what? Yeah. Two weeks off of not lifting and everything? I'm like, yeah, you know what? Just no lifting. You could walk. You could do stuff like that, but I don't want any lifting. It's got to be, you know, that stress. that like, it, like, if you're accumulating so much stress and, like, you just give your body that – um, that power to just recover completely. Well, it it, it fits with everything. It's think an about adaptation it, like, machine. Man. Think about it. Just like fasting, like it, you have to eat food to build muscle. You have to eat protein to build muscle. But we know now that when you take a break from food, that when you reintroduce it, resensitizes your body, and you get like I noticed anecdotally an anabolic effect. Mm-hmm. Had I said this ten years ago to the fitness community, everybody would have been said I was crazy. How don't you dare take time off? Don't ever oh, not eat or whatever. You know what it was? It, it may make sense. It was, I remember distinctively now, it was right after my last season of football. 
and I was just like, you know what? I'm just, like, I'm not going to the gym. I'm not like, I'm, I'm going to step out and wait. It was like, literally it was like a month and then I craved it. I craved it so much. My body was like, I need to, you know, weights. I need to move something around. And then, yeah, it was like maybe two weeks. And then I just started ramping back right back to where I was. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to look, I'm going to do a little more research on that, yeah. but you know, back to the, to the pregnancy thing. I've trained a lot of women pre, uh, pre, during, and post uh, pregnancy, um, quite a bit, in fact, and uh, and I've also obviously we've run gyms before, and so I've seen women who were members and staff members who got pregnant, and there's a major contrast between because I I had uh, I've had several aerobics instructors for some of the gyms that I would run that that was their main source of exercise was aerobics, right? Mm-hmm. It was cardiovascular activity that would get pregnant and then post-pregnancy. And they continued the aerobics and the cardio. And then I've seen some of the trainers that have worked with me that lifted weights and my clients. And I can say, hands down, the women that lifted weights before, during, and after got in shape way faster mm-hmm. post-pregnancy than just the cardio, the, the cardio girls, way faster. So for sure, resistance training. And for this particular individual, especially because I know or I think – what we're saying, like prime, prime pro, then like pre-phase, and then maybe aesthetic, and then split. There you go. Next question is from JG Fit Me. You guys always say muscle takes up less room than fat, but upon further research, muscle takes up about four-fifths of the space. In the past six months, I've lost 20 pounds of fat and gained eight pounds of muscle. But as a female, I'm finding it hard to be happy about the muscle because I feel I look bigger than I should. Any help? So... Muscle is about twenty percent, roughly twenty percent more dense than body fat, so it does take up less space, but not like half the space of body fat. But here's the deal: right, and if you have a body type like this, this girl who's asking this could potentially have the type of body type uh, where puts on muscle relatively easy and has a hard time losing body fat. So the ratio for her may not feel fast enough, and that's really what this is. This, this is common for me. Like I've mm-hmm. had. A lot. I'm uh, had a lot of clients that I've dealt with that, you know, you you do this with them. Like if I get this kind of ectomorph type of body type, and I know some anotypes are dead, but if I get like this ectomorph type of body type of female who comes in and she wants to lose lose fat, and we start going and we're building muscle, it it sits on her body really well, her body really well because she starts to shred the body fat and she doesn't build that mu- that much muscle that fast, and so there's not this like drastic, oh, I, my, my pants are fitting tighter. Mm-hmm. Now, I've trained the opposite where I have a female who just responds to weight, builds muscle really easy, but she also is overweight, so more of an endomorph type of body type, comes in and says, hey, I want to lose body. Now, the protocol is still the same. Like It's still, we need to ramp your metabolism up. We still need to build muscle. This is going to benefit us. But this the psychological challenge for this female is always harder because what ends up happening is exactly what's probably going on with this girl is she's probably feeling her pant sizes and things. She's building some muscle. She's still losing body fat. Like she's probably, I mean, her ratios are probably healthier. Well, she lost twenty pounds but gained eight pounds of muscle. Right, right. So, but on her body, it probably is looking like she is, you know, bulkier looking and not fitting into her clothes like the way sure, she would. Sure. So well, I mean, here's. <laughs> Here's the big difference between fat and muscle. Yes, fat is more voluminous. Uh, to, you know, again, muscle is about twenty percent, eighteen to twenty percent more dense. But here's the other thing: you can choose where you put the muscle on. Not really. That's not the case with body fat. It's not like you can say, "Hey, I'm going to gain body fat. I want it to go to my boobs and my butt." Your body will gain body fat wherever it wants. Right. You can't really sculpt your body unless you go to a surgeon and have them, yeah. you know, fat sculpt. Muscle. You can kind of choose where you want to build it. Right. So if you don't like where you're building your muscle, my advice to you is don't train those areas as much or as hard. Yeah, a little less frequently. And yeah. focus on other areas. And you can shape, I mean, of course, your bone structure and all that stuff, those are large determinants. But you can do quite a bit with well, muscle this building. Is, and this is, in, it may sound weird for somebody who's you know trying to lose body fat, lean down or that, but this is also a great way to use maps aesthetics for you in, in your own custom exactly. way is you take like Sal saying right now and you maybe lay off 
some of the muscle groups that you feel are overdeveloped or plenty muscular you don't want to fill out. For example, I get girls that they build a lot of muscle in their legs and they're like, I don't want, so then don't train legs three times a week. Yeah. We tell most people that because they struggle with building that and they need that frequency. But if you don't need that frequency, we'll lay off that. And then let's say, you know, one of the best ways to, uh, to that I love training women is teaching them to develop their shoulders really well because it's just an area that I think most humans neglect and especially my female clients. And if you shape a woman's shoulders really, really well, and that's putting emphasis on like your rear delts and all three parts of the shoulder, you can really make their arms come together. And that looks great in a tank top and a cutoff or in a bikini. And so there's ways that you can start to sculpt and shape your body to create this illusion of a more hourglass type of shape. Well, it's or interesting because I know like um, the, the movement has been shifted quite a bit more into like functional training and like total body lifts in like, you know, these, these gross motor movements. And, you know, CrossFit is an example of that is like producing a certain like look. You know, and inevitably, you know, these lifts are great and they're great for building, you know, overall strength and, and, but as far as like shaping and sculpting and like, you're looking at your body from an aesthetic perspective, like there's definitely a different uh, way to train that. And so that's why we, we addressed that with that specific program. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're looking like, here's an example, and we market it to like competitors, but it's really not just for competitors. This is a perfect example. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, look, I'll give you an example. I had a, a female client who, and this is rare by the way, but in her particular case, she was one of the rare females that I had trained where she just built big fucking traps in mid back, like yeah. her mid back, like her mid back and her traps just developed and so she, at first she liked it, but then they kept building and she would see herself in a dress and she's like, I don't want my traps yeah. to keep building and I don't want my, and by the way, this is a good place to be because then you can stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're right. It's a good place to be, to look in the mirror and be like, I'm good. Yeah, like, this yeah. is I'm, far I'm good as, right there. Yeah. It's yeah. as far as I want to go. So what do we do? Well, we avoided exercises that work those areas. I still did some stuff to maintain connection to those areas because we don't want to create imbalances. Mm -hmm. And then we started focusing on other things. To balance out her body. And this is one of the things I like about resistance training is you can literally decide where you're putting shape and size on your body. Mm -hmm. And when it comes for, for women, for example, and this isn't true for all women, but for most women, you can always work on building your butt, especially if you're lean. It's just going to give you more curve. Like, you know, more muscle just gives you more of a curve in your butt. You could develop great shoulders. For most women, you can work the fuck out of your back and have a nice sculpted tone looking back. There's nothing will make you look fit and lean like having some back muscle and nothing will make you look skinny and weak like having no back muscle. You see a lot of you know women like that where they diet down and they'll wear like a backless shirt and all you see is scapula and spine, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't have that nice that crease in their, in their low back or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can focus on those. A lot of women I know probably don't need to work out their calves. Women, for whatever reason, tend to develop their calves uh, better than men do. Not all of them, but some of them do. Mm. So for them, I would avoid direct calf work. Um, hamstrings, I have never, I don't think I've ever seen a woman who's just told me they've developed too much hamstring. Right. So that's another area you could focus on. Right, which only adds shape to, I always tell people that are trying to develop or make their butt look bubbly or having more developed hamstrings only encourage that, right? That's mm -hmm. it. So just you just kind of sculpt your body around the way you want to look. Um, and then, and then take it from there. And if you're, if overall, you but be, be patient too. Like that's another thing. Yeah. I mean, that's sculpting the physique and, and getting that stuff. It just, it takes time. Like mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not a quick thing. Like you're not going to diet. What you don't want is to fall in the trap of dieting down hard and fast or buying into some 30 day, 60 day gimmick bullshit. It's like, man, you're, you're sculpting a physique. It's like an artist. Like, and the, the better you want that sculpture to look, the longer it's going to take because you're going to take your time with it and learn some things along the way. And I think this is a, a perfect example, though, of where somebody who you would not think would use uh, the MAPS aesthetic type of protocol that you absolutely could use. It is not just for a competitor who's trying to get on stage. It also can be just a, a, a woman or another or a guy who's trying to sculpt their body or doesn't like how developed they are in one area versus the other. It's, it's and, and designed here, that way. Here's something else I want to make sure I, I cover. Women's clothes are not designed for athletic females. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women, and there's a lot of psychology that goes behind this whole, like, I feel like I'm too big, or I'll give you an example. I'll use myself as an example. The first time I really allowed myself to get lean which was not that long ago because for all my life, I just wanted to get bigger and never really tried to get shredded. The first time I tried to get shredded, I just felt like I was getting small. 
that was it. I put shirts on and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm losing. I'm getting small. And it was a psychological mind fuck. And I think this happens with women when they start to develop a little bit of muscle, when their hamstrings start to develop, their glutes start to develop, their, their quads start to develop. Like your clothes are a little tighter, it makes them nervous. They put on jeans that are designed for women with zero anything, right. just legs that look like broomsticks. Then they put them on, they're like, oh my God, my jeans are tighter. And it's like, well, you've got more shape mm-hmm. in your leg. So these jeans that are designed for the average sedentary woman are going to fit a little bit tighter. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's a little bit of that psychology, you know, going on too. But, you know, here's the deal. Like you can always reduce the intensity. You can always reduce the or change the exercise you're doing. If you're, let's say your legs are building too fast. Well, you don't have to barbell squat. Heavy it'd be, in, like it'd be interesting to, you know, and I always ask clients back to that. Not that anybody else's opinion matters, but I always like to hear like, you know, well, what's your spouse or what's your boyfriend or your girlfriend say, or your friends say about the way your body looks right now. A lot of Give times, a perspective. Yeah, you'd be surprised. A lot of times yeah. they just have a distorted image of That's themselves, it. you yeah. know, and that a lot of that is rooted in their own insecurities or the fear of building muscle or those things like that. It's like, if everybody's telling you, you look great, Susie, yeah. you probably go look ahead and take great. it. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's okay. It's okay. Dude, this this happened with uh, with this happened with Jessica the other day. She we I don't remember you know because we're eating a little bit more or whatever. She, we came home. I don't remember where we were at. And she's like, "Oh my god, I feel massive. I feel so uncomfortable. I'm so big." And I knew she. I looked at her. I'm like, "No, you don't." I'm like, "You look the same." She's like, "No, I'm so big." So I said, "Let's weigh you. Go ahead and weigh yourself on the scale. You know how much you weighed a couple of days ago. Weigh yourself. A half a pound gain, which is water." Yeah. I'm like, "Do you really think you're big? You're huge because you gained a half a pound. Right. It's very. There's a very very strong. Right. And I've experienced it. I know you said." When you got lean, you people will tell you look bigger. Right. And to you, you felt like you were just right. small. So I think I think adding some perspective, you know, what others think is I mean, like I don't believe that it, what others think matters, but I think sometimes it helps you get perspective on how you look at and view yourself. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Cody Phillips, 1791. You guys talk about how HIT training should never be used as cardiovascular stamina training or exercise due to people not exploding with enough power and form breaking down. I was curious if that changed for someone who played a sport that mimicked that style of training. For example, I'm a tennis player and I'm required to continually produce explosive movements even when I'm fatigued. As long as my form isn't breaking down, do you think it's okay to train very intense HIT? Yeah, I think we need to correct. You know, the beginning of that yep, yep. because it it is for conditioning, you know, yep. it is something that's intended for that. We, we put we put it out there as a caveat that a lot of people do this and it gets really sloppy really quick. Right. And so like our intention with that is if we're going to add any kind of plyometrics, every single rep has intent. And so to, to kind of pull back a little bit and make sure that's the priority and you have that in mind. But yes, mm-hmm. it's still very much a conditioning program. Yeah. So stamina, you can have stamina that gives you lots of endurance. You have stamina that allows you to repeat uh, bouts of, of maximal exertion. Um, and increasing total stamina or general stamina will improve all of those things. But when we talk about training explosive movements, what we're talking about is Training your yourself your to improve upon your ability to explode with maximal power, and you want to be specific with that. And what that means is, if I go exercise, 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 and get super fatigued, I can't. I'm not training the ability to explode with maximal exertion. All I'm training is general stamina, and that's what we're talking about when we when we when we're talking about this. Now, our hip program, first off, it's designed to burn a lot of calories. We programmed it to make sure that you don't create imbalances and you do get some 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 strength uh, adaptations or at least some enough strength adaptations so that's not just cardio. Right, and we address mobility in there. We address mm-hmm. mobility mm-hmm. and we're very descriptive with our instructions in there where we're saying you're doing this until form breaks down. You're not doing this until you can't move anymore, which is how a lot of people mm-hmm. will treat HIT. It will improve your general stamina, which will improve your ability to exert yourself. However, if you're just looking to improve on the power you can output, you don't want to do continual hit training for that specifically. What you want to do is you want to do your explosive movement and then give yourself enough time to rest, regroup, okay, everything's back to normal, mm-hmm. and explode again. Because you're just training yourself, your your body's ability to explode hard right. when you call about uh, upon it. So there's kind of two different things. Well, they're yeah. also asking about like if they're mimicking, like so I'm, I'm picturing like, a, like a, a great plyometric move would be like ice skaters that would mm-hmm. kind of mimic some of the, sure. the work that you would want for somebody who is playing tennis, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, can, can he or she, I don't remember if it was a girl or not, can they 
do this to fatigue or push themselves for stamina reasons because they're mimicking a movement and they're an athlete and they understand what they're doing. Yeah, I think there's mm-hmm. an exception to all rules here. You know what I'm saying? I think that somebody who, because that's, that's as close to them emulating actually playing the sport. Like we always recommend, obviously, what's going to get you best at playing your sport is playing your right. fucking sport. Like there's practice. No, right, practice playing that. But if you're if you're not at practice, you're not on the courts and you're in the weight training room and you're doing exercises, right. then yeah, absolutely. I think you can do that because your tennis match is long. That's where you're trying to build other skills that'll bleed into the sport. Like, so if I want to get more explosive. I have to just specifically isolate, you know, the explosive part of that. And I'm going to work on specific lifts that are going to really just, um, you know, add that that component and i'm gonna i'm gonna uh increase that adaptation response and then you know practicing that and doing the movements i actually do in the game you know i get all the conditioning i need just from that you know and i, and I build up my skill and improve that but yeah, I, I would i, I, I would, would make the argument that training control and stability in the the planes and stuff that you need to for the sport and then just practicing that sport may have more carryover than trying to mimic it with exercises. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because there's so much technique involved. Yeah, I, I, and that's the thing. This, this is like an argument all the time with with like sports training. Like a lot, it, it's a debate. Yeah, because there's a lot of trainers out there that will do just like it's very sports specific. And these are all like exercises that mimic and mock like the mm-hmm. movements. You, but again, like you said, I'm, I'm totally like I subscribe more to that as well where I want them to actually do – um, you know, bilateral movement, if they're always in unilateral, well, I, I want to be able to get them to uh, understand like what like summoning like the ultimate amount of force like feels like. And then how can I use that now in, you know, a unilateral position? And then um, but but it's really building a baseline, you know, it's building a foundation, it's building a baseline. And then, you know, meanwhile, you know, your skills and all that you can, you can work on, you know, as, 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 you know, separate to that. Well, I see like, I see value in kind of doing both. Right. So I could see myself going through our hip program and, and we just keep, we're just going to use ice skaters to keep using that as an example, although there's lots of different examples of plyometrics and how it carries over into a sport like this. But let's just say, you know, this, the first round, the first time I came through ice skaters, I'm, I'm, I, each explosive movement, I'm really gathering myself, stabilizing, exploding, gathering myself, stabilizing, exploding, and I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on the power of the, of the movement and getting that out of it. Then I see other times of coming back and then the next time through it, maybe I'm going fast and, and I'm, I'm pushing more towards the stamina side of it because mm. both of those are going to carry over and be beneficial to True. my game, my game because mm. there's going to be, I'm going to have to play, I could play a tennis match that ends up taking hours long. So I would want to build my gas tank, yeah. making the, doing those same cuts and movements. So I would want to build stamina there. But then I also want, there's going to be one but time. that's like a drill though. You know, that's something you do in practice, like an ice skater that like, but what I'm saying is like in workouts. Like, yeah. Well, I am. And that's what I'm saying though. Why not? Why not allow it to carry over sometimes into your workout? I think that the, the ca- way we caution people was to not turn it into just purely a stamina. That doesn't, right. that would be, that would be wrong. So what I'm saying is I don't think it's wrong for someone to do that as long as you're, you're aware that it's important that you are also putting emphasis on the, you know, the gathering yourself and stabilizing and exploding in the power side of the mm-hmm. plyometric mm-hmm. as as it could be for the movement. I how, mean how you practice something is going to be how you end up doing it in your in your sport. So if you're practicing to ultimate fatigue and your form is breaking down and you're just sloppy as fuck, then that's what you're going to look like when you start to break down and fatigue while right. you play. Yeah. So the goal is to practice perfect so that you know when you do hit those limits, your form stays intact a little bit more because Here's the bottom line. Sports, although having the most stamina, the most strength, the most explosive power, the most flexibility, all of those play a factor into whether or not you're going to do well. The other big, 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 big factor that may be as big or if not bigger than those is how technical you are. I mean, hitting. I can be the most fit athlete in the world, but if I've never played tennis, a tennis player who's got terrible stamina is going to kick my ass. Mm-hmm. They're going to they're going to know where to place the ball, how to hit it. I don't even know how to hit the ball, right? So. You, 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 you want to also make sure that you maintain good technique and good skill while you're doing these training rather than just – because I, what I see with a lot of athletes is that they forget that part. Then it, the workout just becomes about 
how hard I could push myself and how much I can right, sweat. Right. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't even matter now. My technique doesn't even fucking yeah, matter. Yeah, you may as well jump rope for an hour. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't yeah, make a sense that's, anymore. That's, and that we all agree on. 100% yeah, yeah, I, right. I, I agree that that's the, the idea is to not allow those workouts to turn into just a pure fucking cardio workout. That's right. Mm-hmm. This is what I used to see this at. This was one of the, the biggest things and problems I had with Orange Theory was because they've motivated these people to chase after these points. Yeah, it doesn't matter what exercise you do. Right. They So then what would happen, the, the, the idea of how it was designed was brilliant. Problem was the execution of it is where they failed because a lot of, a lot of the coaches couldn't deliver this message where when you're on the treadmills and you're doing cardio, you were cardio. And then when you went over the weights, you should be weight training. The problem was these people got so excited to chase after the points up on the TV screen that they wanted to get more points, while they, more of these cardio points while they're over in the weights. And so they would just circuit weight. They'd get five pound weights, never stop and rest in between, mm-hmm. repping out like crazy. And it was- It's like con- you stay on the treadmill. Yeah, exactly. Stay on the treadmill. I mean, at that point, you may as well just stay on the on, on the treadmill. You're not getting the real good benefits of the strength training by having the weights over there. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, so it doesn't make sense. So I think that's the, the fear of, of telling anybody, yeah, it's okay to kind of train that way is that- a lot of people already gravitate towards that type of training as basically just cardio, mm-hmm. cardio with weights. You know. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Next up is Kami Neski. What are your thoughts on post-activation potentiation? Why isn't this incorporated into MAPS performance? God, I feel like these are all Justin questions. Today. Yeah, I love this one. I did one of them. Yeah. yeah. There's no, one, the, one more part of this question. Is there any carryover to endurance sports such as Spartan triathlon, etc.? Okay, so the, the the first part. So why it wasn't incorporated? We actually put it in Prime. Yeah, and yeah. the we reason did it differently though. We did it differently, and we we actually have a video I know on YouTube that we kind of explain. It's not post; it was actually pre. pre. Yeah, and so that was like our spin on it. Um, and and we we put a lot of the more advanced techniques. So this is I would consider this a more of an advanced technique. Oh, right? hundred so, percent. So that's why it's not like a, when we're addressing programming, we're we're addressing the general public. Red, green, black is it was. I mean, and, and you're seeing it now as we just released Split. Right, those were the first three were really the foundation. Right, right. and if anything that you might see us start to do now is we're going to probably get into more advanced or specialized type of programming, which Absolutely. would be silly for us to do that first. It yeah. would post activation potential. Potentiation, just to explain for the people listening who don't know what that is, you would do a heavy movement first. This is how they traditionally would do it. So let's say I would do barbell squats. So I do my set of barbell squats. Right after I rack the weight, I would do a few reps of explosive jumps. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like one to three. Yeah. I'm doing explosive movement after. I'm doing a heavy movement, and studies will show that you actually activate more muscle fibers when you do this, yeah. which possibly- That's a really loud response from your CNS. Yeah, which could lead to more muscle building and all that. Now, I want to be clear, the 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 stu- what you're going to get from that is small. It's a small percentage well, increase. Well, I see, I, where, I, like where big, I see the best is going towards the athlete. That's right. Yeah. Is teaching you how to call upon that explosiveness. Like yeah. that right there, there's great value right. in- throwing fucking 300 pounds on your back, squatting two or three reps real quick, re-racking, going over to a jump box mm-hmm. and fucking blowing out like one. And you'll see yourself fly afterwards. Right. It's, it's an, and so it's really what I th- I see is the, the, the neurological benefit of teaching you how to call upon all yes. that to fire. You summon that force output. Right. That's and then, right. The, that, it teaches that process. Like it's, it, it's that's the hardest thing to teach athletes because it's intrinsically you have to be able to produce things on command right then with as much force like as possible because that's what's going to give you that explosive edge on your your opponent. Exploding is a skill. You know, one of my favorite things to do is when I train, and you know I know how to ex- how to explode not because I did explosive exercises because I trained in in judo, wrestling, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu where you, there's certain positions and stuff you are going to be doing explosive movements. I, I love taking people who've only ever lifted like bodybuilders, so controlled, squeeze, and a lot of stuff, and then try and teach them an explosive movement <laughs> like, a, like a kettlebell swing, like yeah. a basic semi-explosive movement like a swing. And you can see them try to lift it. Oh, it just turns into a shoulder raise. It's to- it, they don't know how to like do it because it's just, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's there's it, so much skill involved. Yeah, and they don't know how to relax when they need to relax and like you know like anchor themselves and like be able to anti rotate and all these things. Like that's all part of like this this complex process that you have to learn. You that's know, right. as an athlete, or but, you teach a clean and press, and it becomes like a reverse curl. Yeah, you know, to <laughs> well, press. That's like, Justin right. hit on it. What it is, it's that bodybuilders are all about tension, time that's and right. tension. Everything's 
is about time under tension and again, getting the muscle to work constantly and never be at rest. And uh, athletic performance and explosiveness, there's there's actually more of an art or a skill to that where you relax and then explode the body and you have, it's certain things are contracted. It's speed. Yeah, there's there's a lot speed, more going you don't, on. You don't want friction in the way of speed. Right. No, no, no. And so no, tension would not be a great thing to have no. in all of your muscles, like your That's shoulders right. while you're trying to do a swing. That's right. right. Well, no. It doesn't help. Grappling is great because it's both. You, well, you need to have about, explosiveness and you have to have uh, tension. So you got to talk about how we we flipped the the pap on its head, right? And we mm-hmm. we turned it into ignite sessions. And so if you and are, it's in Maps Prime, right? And, and what we recommend is that you explode first and then do the tension movement after, mm-hmm. which makes personally makes much better sense. I know you want to be you want to explode when you're fresh because then you can explode harder, you can jump harder, um, and then go to the tension movement. And I, f- you feel immediate carryover. You feel the carryover. Well, we, we I, I also think it's better we, that we way. also addressed it that way because I think the programming behind it was more built towards the the training, the 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 form of the exercise and building muscle than it was athletic performance. Because mm-hmm. I could still see a lot of the benefits of PAP That's for a good an, point. An, an athlete. If I was training just a pure athlete, you know, I want to teach them to be able to call upon all the explosiveness after doing something like that. So right. I still see value in PAP. I just think for the general population for us to teach a technique, we saw more value in teaching it in the uh, reverse. Yeah, and, and so that's why we incorporated yeah. the ignite. Most sessions. programs we've we've understood that like neurologically, like where the deficiencies lies, they're just not communicating in certain parts. Like certain muscle groups aren't responding the way they should, and so this is just another advanced technique to really highlight that fact and get you um, to respond the way that uh, you never have before. Yeah, from a skill perspective, it just doesn't make sense. To me, let me let me put it in uh, different terms. It would be like long distance running for a little bit and then doing sprints afterwards versus, and by the way, this is all warmed up, versus doing sprints and then finishing your workout with some long running. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense to do the sprints first because that's when you're the strongest, that's when you have more more fresh, and that's when you can, you you can, you're going to perform at the best. You can push, you can explode the most, you can put out the most force. So it didn't, it never really made sense to me to go heavy tension, then to explosive. Again, you have to be warmed up, by the way. You're not yeah. talking about exploding cold, right? You still got to warm up and all that stuff versus explode and then go to the tension. And when I've done it that way, better results with myself and my clients. Well, I, so here's here's my debate on that, okay, is that when you when you get under, you know, a 300-pound squat and you do, it, you do that first and then you go over to the jump box, the thing about loading, like when you load that much weight on your back and you squat – it forces your body to recruit because otherwise you get fucking buried. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you and then you re-rack it and now you go to do a jump box. You feel free. Yes. Yeah. You 100%, it's easier for you to call upon that. Mm-hmm. So there's no doubt in my mind that I... there's Depends how intense you're doing right. the squats. Are we just doing a few reps? No, we just, not- just like I said, 300 pounds on your back for one to three reps. Okay, I get that. So I used to do this, but I've seen them use it differently. I've uh, seen people go 10, 15 reps, no, fatigue themselves. That is not right. That's and that's not, why that's not, not good at all. That's yeah. not right, Pat. That's right. Like the way you're supposed to do it is one to three reps. It should be you know eighty percent plus intensity, mm-hmm. and then you go over and you do, and you just want one to three reps. That's it. Yeah. So so all the, your the paps themselves, great tools for like if you're if you're doing like um, any testing. Like so, if I'm doing like a vertical jump test. And I want to do, you know, and, and increase that, that like uh, on demand, like, like access to like as much force production as possible. Like Adam said, with, with squatting, I used to do that. I used to do that and it would massively make an impact. Oh, dude, you massively. Can, we'll, we'll go out right now. I'll have you jump up on the highest box right now and see how much you struggled to get up on there. Then I'll go throw 300 pounds on your back and then you do it again. You'll watch yourself yeah. clear that box yeah. like nothing. It's, it's, it's definitely a game changer. And I think. So but it, that's it, so specific to athletes, like that that it, that's all we're talking about. Exactly. So, and I think that's a it's a it's a good way to teach somebody to call upon that. Where now, if you go do the jump box first, sure you're fresher and you potentially you potentially have more energy to actually te- technically do that. But it's actually I think it's harder to tap into your CNS. I think it's harder to get everything recruited and firing the way you want than it is when you you put a bunch of weight on your back. That forces you. It's do or die. That thing's going to bury you in the ground if you don't. Let's let's use a different example. Like say you're doing like plyo push-ups and then you you carry that over into a heavy bench. Right. You're going to feel the difference. You will. And here's here's the thing. I think we're assuming that But also do a heavy 315-pound bench then go over and do a plyo push-up. Well, 
here's the watch thing. Watch how fucking I, light you, your body me, weight feels. But yeah. I think what we're assuming is that the person isn't priming properly before they do the explosive movement or they're going into it cold. Because look, if, you were, if you're going to a 300-pound squat, you probably warmed up before you go to the 300-pound squat. Mm-hmm. You need to warm up before you do the fucking jump too. Mm-hmm. So if you just go into a jump, yeah, I get that. You're not going to be able to call upon it. But if you properly set yourself up and set yourself up and then right. you go into your set... And I'm not, look, in my opinion, for more people, I think if you're qualified, the explosive movement before may be better. Is there benefit to both? Yeah. Well, course. what I, I don't think there's no the way I look, we looked at it, at least in my opinion, the reason why we, when we first created this, was like, it's the risk versus reward. And I think that you can get as, as good of benefit or close to as good of benefits by doing it in the inverse way for somebody. And mm-hmm. I would much rather, I would rather take a client who I, I'm not certain of their body control and have them actually jump just their body weight than stacking 300 pounds on their back to try and get them to fire everything. Right, so yeah. I think that's a, it's, it's more advanced to ask you know somebody to go, hey, go 80% plus of your max right. and do it one to three reps and then know go. Know your around. audience. And so, yeah, that's why we, we tended to lean a little more towards the pre versus the post because I think, yeah, post it really like it narrows it down to a very small population. Yeah. And, then, and then, and then I know we're not even, we're kind kind of dancing around the real question which has to do with muscle and it's like the, I mean you're splitting hairs as, as far yeah. as the difference of incorporating yeah. and then the amount of risk it's a short lasting effect anyway right and if you're trying to do something as far as like explosively it, you're, there's always a higher risk at that so it, the to incorporate that uh, I wouldn't be a fan of doing it if you are if you have prime like you can use it and play with it a little bit but it's not it's not a tool that I think it should well, be in for, every, everybody's regimen. For sports like Spartan and triathlon, I think explosive movements may have some some benefit, especially I think maybe not so much triathlon. Dude, I'll tell you the but uh, maybe Spartan because of you train, know, jumping been, over walls. I've been training and, Katrina and her brother and all them with the Spartan. I've been around it a lot lately and the the biggest things you can do for Spartan Train for stamina because you obviously need to have endurance to be able to run. So you right. need to be able to run a few miles uh, really good, right? So train that, increase that. Build I, up your work capacity. Work capacity and the ability to to hang and pull your body weight up and yep. push your body weight up. So yep. dips, pull-ups, and hangs mm-hmm. like uh, should be in grip strength, right? So those yep. things are like – those things right there will mm-hmm. carry you – through a Spartan race, no doubt. And so I'd get great at those instead of trying to overcomplicate it with things like PAP. Yeah, yeah. It's such a, it's such a, if you want to, and if you're just trying to build muscle and you just want to build more muscle, I I would say risk versus war might not even be worth it. Right. Yeah. explosive stuff you know I, I just mean? I love it for testing out yeah no if you're not here <laughs> you know, now that, if you're really I don't know who it. we're talking to so if we're talking to somebody who is very advanced great body mechanics got an athletic background fucking it's a very fun thing to do mm. it is it's a very cool thing I remember the first time that I, I remember watching a video on it and then actually applying it and I was like whoa yeah like that oh, was shit cr- that worked yeah, yeah like that really worked like so uh-huh. you can you'll feel it the first time you do it you'll be able to but it's like okay well what does that mean for you <laughs> you know what i'm saying like is that all do, do my quads develop way more no you know what i'm saying did i also get six inches on my vertical no it's like you a know? cool trick yeah it is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally do some occlusion on your legs and you'll build them yeah. <laughs> you'll build more yeah, than really, really, no job. excellent so look we have a bunch of free guides uh that focus on different targets like how to build your chest how to build your calves how to work your core uh, we have a hit training guide. We have like 12 guides. They're absolutely free. Go to mindpumpfree.com, download one of them or download all of them. They cost you nothing. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.